What's up everybody, how's it going? In this video, I wanna talk about how I'm managing to run a profitable business, Algo Expert, which has been doing insanely well lately. We actually did $70,000 in sales last month alone. How on top of that, I also have a demanding full-time job as a software engineer. And how on top of that, I'm growing this YouTube channel, posting three videos per week, or maybe more like two and a half videos per week on average, all the while staying a functional human being. Just to give a little bit of context for those of you who are new here or who don't know that much about me, I co-founded this website, algoexpert.io, about two and a half years ago now. We help software engineers prepare for coding interviews. By the way, if you want to check it out, use the promo code CLEM, C-L-E-M, for a discount on the platform. And this was right before I started my full-time job as a software engineer at Google, where I was for the past two years. And so during those two years, I was doing both that full-time job at Google, as well as running this business. Then I recently quit my job at Google, and that's when I started this YouTube channel. And then a couple of months ago, I started my new full-time job as a software engineer. And so now I'm doing all three of these things in tandem and somehow staying sane. I think I'm staying sane. With that, sit back, relax, grab your beverage of choice. For me, it's going to be water in a coffee mug. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, smash the like button. And here are the 10 things that I've done over time to manage to do all of these things and the 10 things that I would give you as advice. So the first thing that I do and that I would advise you to do if you want to do a lot of stuff is, and by the way, this is the most obvious of all the things that I'm going to be talking about in this video, but it also has to be said. And this is just that you have to work a lot. At the end of the day, if you want to do this much stuff at once, there's no other way than to work a lot on it. And please bear with me before you start giving me hate on this, because the rest of the tips in this video are going to sort of support this first point. But really, it just comes down to if you want to do all of these things, you have to put in the work. To give you an idea, most of my weeks are on average somewhere between 80 to 100 hour work weeks. Now, I don't like quantifying work weeks like that because then people sort of rightfully start to ask, well, when does this person have time to eat or to go to the bathroom or to shower? So I think a better way of putting this is the grand majority of my time is spent working on one of the three things that I mentioned at the beginning of the video, period. End of story. Okay, so let's talk about some of the other things now that I think are going to be way more enlightening than just work a lot, which is important, but again, kind of dull in a way. The second thing that I would advise you to do, and this one is really important because it relates to all of the other tips that I'll be giving you in this video, is to realize that every single activity activity or thing that you do, everything that you do during the 24 hours per day that you are given has a cost. It might not be a financial cost, but it has a cost. That cost might be in the form of time. Maybe it'll be in the form of money. Maybe it'll be in the form of missing out on doing something else. For instance, you might forego entertainment in favor of doing something else, or you might miss out on being able to do work by doing something else instead. Every single thing that you do has a cost, and I think that it's incredibly useful to think of every activity in your life in terms of what it costs you. What could you be doing instead of that activity, and is that thing worth what you're missing out on. And we're gonna elaborate on this in some of the next things that I address. So the third thing that you need to realize, and this is very much a follow-up to the previous point, is that time is your most valuable resource. Time is your most valuable resource. Repeat after me, time is your most valuable resource. You can make more money. You can find more entertainment. You can catch up on sleep. You cannot buy more time, or at least not more than the 24 hours that you're allocated per day. By the way, if someone's figured out how to get 25 hours per day, call me. You have to be extremely intentional in how you allocate your time. You almost have to be ruthless in how you allocate your time. And perhaps the best way to describe this is to give you an example. To commute to work every day, I take the train and the subway. Most people would argue that both of those things are a big waste of time, unless you are very intentional about your time and you spend it smartly. Is smartly a word? Yeah, smartly is a word. Both in the train and in the subway, I'm working. In the train, I'll do whatever I need to do that can be done on a decent to spotty internet connection, whether that be development or coding out algorithms. I spend every minute of that train ride 
being productive. Now, the subway is where things get really interesting, because let's be real, you're not gonna do jack shit in the subway. I'm not gonna be taking out my MacBook Pro like, hmm, let me debug this issue in the middle of the subway in New York City. Unless you're very intentional about how you spend your time. What you can do in the subway is draft an answer to an email. What you can do in the subway is draft a post on LinkedIn. What you can do in the subway is edit the description of a YouTube video. There are actually a lot of things that you can do in a place like the New York subway, but what you have to do is you have to make sure that you allocate your time in such a way that these activities that are doable in the subway don't get done when you're at home, when you have a great internet connection, but instead get done when you're in the subway, so that at home you are not bogged down by these activities and you can focus on more important work that does require an internet connection, like maybe developing features or filming a video. The last example that I'll give here for intentional time allocation is going to be eating. When I'm at home, I'm always eating in front of the computer doing something else. Otherwise, I feel like I'm just wasting my time. I get that this is not for everybody, I'm just sharing what I do. Now this is where the pro tip comes. Imagine that you're at home and you've got two things to do before going to bed. You have to write a bit of code for your project and you have to watch your favorite YouTuber's video, my video. Do your work and then watch my video while eating. Don't watch my video then go eat and find yourself not doing anything while you're eating, so maybe surfing the web and doing something else that's not really useful. Do both of those activities that can be done in tandem together, and then do the other activity, in this case the coding, that can't really be done while eating, although it can, trust me, when you're not eating. The next tip is to micro-optimize your life. That sounds fancy, but what it really comes down to is finding the little things in your life that are really annoying or that take a little bit more time than they should or add a little bit too much stress to your life and finding ways to optimize them or eliminate them entirely. So here are a few examples for me. I wear the same exact outfit every day. Well, not exactly the same one. It is the same one, but not the exact same one. Does that make sense? Don't worry, I'm coming out with a video on that soon. Saves me a ton of time in the mornings, removes some stress, it's great. I have two pairs of AirPods. Why? Because it saves me the hassle of having to unsync them and resync them between my computer and my phone when I'm going to the gym, when I'm going to work. It's a very little thing that actually goes a long way. Please don't think that I'm saying that if you don't have two pairs of AirPods, you can't like run a business and have a full-time job at the same time. No, of course not. But it's just an example of a micro-optimization that really actually goes a long way. And then the last thing is for my midnight snack, I go with something that doesn't take any time to make. I just have to turn on the oven, put this Trader Joe's frozen pizza in it, wait 10 minutes, and out it comes ready to be eaten. Seriously, best meal ever. I'm gonna go put it in the oven, and now I can film this video while the pizza heats up. You gotta admit that these are quality tips. Okay, so the next tip, I think we're at tip number five, is to separate all of these activities that you're doing. And what I mean by that is when you are at work, at your full-time job, you are at work, and you are only doing your work. You are not thinking about your other stuff, you are not doing your other stuff under any circumstances, you are doing your work. And similarly, when you are not at work, you are doing your other stuff, which also happens to be work, but you get the idea. Not only should you never mix these two things or these multiple things for many reasons that I won't even mention in this video, but as far as the things that I am talking about in this video, the whole like managing your time and all of that, you definitely don't want to mix these two things because otherwise you really will go crazy. You will be completely messing with your mind while you're doing one activity and thinking about the other, and that's just not good. You have to learn to train your mind to detach itself from one of your activities while you're doing the other, if that makes sense. Really important. So this next one is one that I've really been training myself to do a lot more recently. I think that it's incredibly important, and it's this idea of not letting the small things that are really important that you have to do but that are very small and annoying pile up. Some of my biggest mistakes have come from letting small tasks, like answering a customer ticket, 
remembering to send an email to someone, doing things that are completely unrelated to work but that you have to do, like for instance, checking your bank account to make sure that a charge isn't fraudulent, or ordering an external hard drive because your computer is out of disk space. If you let these little things pile on, they will suffocate you, and it is the worst thing in the world, that feeling when you come home and you're like, oh my god, I have to review this pull request, but wait, I have to debug this issue. Oh wait, that customer, I needed to respond to them. But wait, we needed to talk to this person. Oh wait, I forgot to answer this text to that other person. But wait, I need to... You get the idea. It can really get to a point where you just feel like you can't breathe anymore because you just have too many things to do. And one of the best ways that I've found to remedy that is to not let these small things pile on by doing them as soon as they pop up. So for instance, if someone emails me and I know that it's an email that I have to respond to, I'm gonna do my very best to respond to it immediately. Or maybe the second that I get home, I'll sit down at my computer, okay, I don't wanna answer this email right now, nope, I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna do it. Just get these little things out of the way. They're annoying, but just like rip the band-aid off do them, and that way you'll be able to focus on the bigger, somewhat less stressful things afterwards. Oh shit, my pizza! So this next tip is something that I mentioned in another video that I made about my performance at Google, and it's this idea of being extremely self-aware and making sure that this is really the lifestyle that you want. This lifestyle that I'm leading is not for everybody, and I'm fully aware of that. This is all that I do. Putting aside the gym that I go to every day and a little bit of YouTube sprinkled around throughout the day, YouTube is my kryptonite, this is all that I do. And I'm not looking for sympathy here. I'm not trying to play the archetype of the warrior who sacrifices everything for, like, no. I voluntarily do this because I love it. I wouldn't have it any other way. I love doing this. But you need to make sure that this is the kind of lifestyle that you want if you're pursuing it. If your priorities lie elsewhere, that's totally fine and you should cater to those priorities because you'll end up being happier. And at the end of the day, at the risk of sounding sappy, happiness is really all that matters. And then the final tip that I can give you is to take care of yourself. Take care of your physical health and your mental health. I'm gonna be making a video on burnout and why I don't really burn out and how you can avoid burning out, but I think that that's really important. You have to take care of yourself, whether that be exercising, which is something that I value a lot, or making sure that you eat properly and you're not screwing yourself up from that point of view, making sure to catch up on sleep. If you're sacrificing a lot of sleep, that's something that I do a lot and it's not sustainable, it's not great. Most of the work week I'm averaging like four hours of sleep per night, if not less, which is terrible, and then I catch up on the weekends because otherwise I would literally not be functioning. But the point is, make sure to take care of yourself and do the things that are gonna keep you going, because otherwise that will prevent you from doing those other things. That's gonna be it for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Please let me know what you thought about these tips in the comments below. By the way, commenting really helps with engagement and with the YouTube algorithm. So does smashing the like button, so please do that if you enjoyed the video. I would really appreciate it. And I wanted to take this opportunity to really thank you if you're watching this video or if you're smashing the like button or commenting. I genuinely appreciate it so much. A lot of your comments keep me really motivated to make these videos, so really Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I genuinely, genuinely appreciate it. And with that, I will see you in the next one. Bonus tip for those of you who are still watching. Wondering how to eat a pizza while working at your computer without getting your hands dirty and your keyboard dirty? I'm about to blow your mind.